what is up guys so in today's tutorial we are going to build a portfolio website with react.js as a developer it is very essential to have a personal website where you can display your works for others to see so if you want to have a personal website you are in the right right place for sure and by the end of this video you will learn how to build reusable components with react and also we are going to use Tailwind CSS to style our components. Now, Tailwind CSS is a CSS framework which allows us to easily style and make our website responsive with some utility classes, right? Now, after we are done building this site, we will learn how to deploy it to Vercel. So, if this sounds interesting, stay with me to the end of this video and don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel to make this video reach a lot more people. Okay, so we have the website here. <coughs> As you can see, this is the live version. I've already deployed it on Vercel. So you can see the domain here, Vercel.app. And it's a free hosting service we are going to get from Vercel. We are not going to pay anything. So yeah, I hope you guys noticed how the components fly in from the bottom and from the right. So on the stats, you can see we have a header here with some tabs and have your name yeah this is my name and maybe a description of who you are a little information about who you are and then we have a button here with some gradients linear gradients colors and notice the hover effect and also when we come on the nav bar notice what happens when we hover on the icon i'm going to learn how to do this with tailwind css it's actually very easy to do this with tailwind css when you hover on them we have some bouncing animation here and notice how <coughs> this image also some animation on it which actually makes it a lot nicer in my opinion so yeah we're going to learn how to do this with Tailwind CSS as well and when you come down we have this section where you can just put in the text tags you are most familiar with so whatever programming language you use most often you understand so you just add your text tags here as well that's what this section here is for and also if you have projects too you can just come and put them here so for now i have this dummy data here it's not real but as you can see some lorem ipsum text here so you can just change the text and put in some full description of your projects right and this button if it's a web app if your project is a web app this button will just direct the user or the one viewing your website your portfolio website to the projects you have built right yeah, so you can just add your projects in here and we have this testimonial section like as the name goes testimonial so other people's testimonies about maybe your a client right have some testimonies about the work you've rendered for them you can just put them here in the testimonial section like so so as usual this is just some dummy text with same image across and also we have this simple contact form here where the users can also contact you on yeah and also this website is responsive we can check in the developer tools and notice how responsive this web this website actually is so let me change it to some mobile device and yeah you can, as you can see it is mobile friendly as well fully responsive and you can use this anywhere okay so that's it for the demo let's get started with the build so first of all let me open my command prompt to create a new react app so to do this let me do windows r and then open my command prompt and let me change directly to my desktop and let's bootstrap our react project with create react app so you do npx create react now for this to work you need to have node installed on your pc so if you haven't installed node go to their website and node just search on google node and click the first link and install node on your pc so npx create react app and then the name of your app so let's call this portfolio or let me see personal website yt for youtube so npx create react app personal website IT. Now this is going to go ahead and create all the necessary models for us to start writing our, or start building in React. It makes it very quick and easy for us. So just we'll start creating it. Okay, so we've successfully installed 
create react install react with create react app so if you have a message here saying happy hacking then it means everything worked and we can now start building our react project so let's first copy this command which is cd personal website yt so we are changing directory to the folder we've just created yes now let me do code dot to open it in vs code okay so let me open it up good <coughs> okay so now we have our react project set let's see if everything is working fine just run npm start and this should open the react app on your browser for you um sticks a couple of seconds all right still loading okay so whilst it's loading let's make some changes in our folder structure so in the um index.js there are some things we can we don't need that we can remove like this comments and okay and <clears throat> i'm going to remove this strict mode component wrapped around the app component here and then we are going to remove this import because we just cleared that lines those lines and then yeah that's it for this file okay so if you've installed react app and you've run the npm start command you should see something like this on localhost 3000 so it's running on localhost 3000 it should, it should open on this server this localhost server for you so if you see something like this it means you have successfully installed react app and you can get started writing your code okay so <clears throat> now most of these things here are just default data we, we, we don't need so we are going to delete them so first of all let me remove this one logo dot svg this one setup and this one as well and um app.css as well let's delete them okay so we are only going to use the index.css app.js and then index.js but we'll be creating extra components in addition to this so in the app.js we also have this here these things here let me clear this import and also clear everything we want to start everything from scratch so and let me move this and see h1 hello world so we should see everything cleared like so good so now we have our hello world here on our browser okay so the first thing we would want to do is install tailwind css because that's what the main css framework we're going to use i'm not going to write our usual custom css we are we are familiar with but then i'm going to use the win css because it makes it makes life a lot easier all right so let's head over to their website tailwind css and click the first link and then let's move to their docs so that they have a good documentation where you can can explore and see what utility classes you can use and what what will work for you so they have installation guides you can use but we are going to use specific framework which is the react create react app framework so we have all these frameworks here we're using create react app so we need the um the guide for create react app so this is the first one we've already created our react project so let's just start from here npm store yeah let's copy this command here and then <clears throat> In our app let me split the terminal and let me paste it here it's going to install that for us okay so while installed let me copy this one as well and when we are done with this install this installation it actually creates some config files for us that we can use okay now let me paste the next one which is npx tailwind nxp 
to also create a config file for us. And in, in the tori.config.js file, as you can see here, I'm going to paste this like this snippet in that file. So let me copy it. Yes, so we have the tori.config that has created this file for us. We didn't create it. It was just created for us. So let me copy this model. No, let me just highlight it and paste the one I copied from their website here. Yes, so model.export. So this one is just indicating which files or extensions can um, we use that we want to use the Tailwind CSS in. So all files with this extensions can use the Tailwind CSS and all files inside the .src folder. So basically, yes. And inside our index.css, we can add this things as well this lines of code so let's open index.css here and then clear everything and paste this like so okay now i think that we are done with the installation we can test our app now we can test and see if um if tailwind is working or have i or have i done uh, let me put this test open local local host test out okay so let's see if everything is working now um okay so let's let's get started building our website um in app.js let's start adding our utility classes so um first of all let's give it a background color Let's give it a background color with this hex code um, 080808 like so. So it's a black color. Yeah. So this is our this is going to be our background color. Okay. So um the next thing is let's give specify our width. So our width should be screen. So one thing about Tailwind CSS is that when you hover on it, you see the actual CSS styles. In correspondence with the utility classes so w screen is this class here and then this is the value right now before you can see things like this and have this support you can you, sh you should install this extension called tailwind intelligence so this in your extensions in vs code type tailwind tailwind css and it will give you this intelligence and install it it's going to give you this tailwind css support in vs code so we can install this extension okay let's continue so we have a width of screen here and let's give it a height or a mean height of screen also yes so let's see what i get let me remove this okay so now as you can see the whole screen is black like we want it to be okay so now let's create our first component and first of all let's make all our put all our components that are going to create in a folder so i'm going to create a new folder called components components and then let's add a new file called the first thing we're going to add is um the header so let's add the header and in right here to create a component you should initialize it with a capital letter it's very important otherwise it won't work so header.js go to rfce so this actually gives me the boilerplate for us building a React component. So if you want, it's an extension I've installed called React ES7 snippet. So if you come to the ex extension ES7 snippet, yeah, where is it? Okay, yeah, this is it. ES7 blah 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 snippet. So we can install this extension now as well if you want to have this. Access. okay so we have our header here let's import it in our app.js like so header yeah this is going to automatically import it from if it doesn't just type it type import header from in the where your file is components and the header okay good we've imported it now let's see if it's there okay yes it's, it's there because since the text is black you can't really see it so the header is there so let's start editing our header so we're not going to do build the header from scratch we are going to um, use one from um, flowbyte 
right so they have these components that we can integrate in our app so if you go to flowbyte.com you can see a variety of components that you can use a variety of tailwind components that you can use in your app so let's go to the docs and let's see what components we can use we have all these components but i'm going to we're only going to use the nav bar here we're going to use the nav bar here and we have these headers here these ones but we are not going to use this one i'm going to use um i'm going to use this one here so i'm going to customize it to suit what we want so in the finished one as you can see we have this header here so that's what we are coming to build right now i'm going to build this header thingy here okay cool so let's go back and paste the code we just copied so i, I copied this i literally just copied everything here I click here to copy all the codes here so we can do that as well and let me paste it like so i'm going to get some errors here because some of the syntax are not that it doesn't work in react so we are just something like this image this image tag here hasn't been closed so you can just fix that right now straight away and also this anchor warning it is a correct href but let's just keep it as a p for now but let me clear the href for now and then let me change this to p and do the same thing here change this to p and then um come here as well with this p this. now this is a good way you don't always have to start building from scratch even though it's good to start building from scratch but if you want to quickly get started doing something it's it's advisable to start using already built components and customize them to your liking so that you get you become a lot more efficient and productive and you start you build projects very quickly if you do that okay so let's see what we have in our app now okay so we have this header here flow bikes they have their stuff here but i'm going to change we're going to change everything okay okay so first thing let's clear their logo the flow bikes logo we saw at the top and then the button as well let's clear them as well okay now let's see what we have okay not bad and um we're going to add these icons these icons here as well and they're going to be in the div so let, let me quickly add them let me create a div for them for now then we start adding the icons okay nothing is going to change here and um let's start styling it okay so i think i should reduce this size so that we see all the changes we make clearly okay so let me bring this here and um let me increase okay anyways so um okay okay all right so let's start styling this <coughs> so we have this this is the style we have from the code we just copied right copied from flowbyte so let's start customizing it to our liking so we have the normal ones they have here is the background white i don't even know why this is here let me clear this and we have this border px padding on the x axis and then this breakpoint okay so we are going to keep the, the styling here for now but we just add our own so um let me add a padding on the y axis of five and let's see the change here yeah so you notice it's increased in height a little yes so we are going to clear this one here like so and then in this div we have justify between all right we are not going to use justify between we are going to use justify around and when you hover on this you are going to see the corresponding css value so justify content space around so that's what it means in tone so if you are now getting started with tone it's a good thing to have tone intelligence installed to help you understand the utility classes whilst you are still learning okay 
So in this day, we are, go we are going to add the icon. So let me clear this one here for me. So the icons we are coming, to, we are going to use is um, React icons. And to use React icons, we first have to install it. So let's head over to their website and Google React icons. And it's going to direct us to the website. And you're going to see how we can use React icons. So first of all, we have to install React icons. Let's copy this one here. And let me let me increase this. And then um in the second terminal, I'm going to I'm going to okay, let me clear. Let me paste it here. And can install React icons. We're going to install the component for us. We're going to get different kinds of models that we can use to use icons okay so this is the docs and this is how we can use them you import an icon like so and then you use it as a component like this right so i'm going to see how we can use it let me copy how it's been imported here and then where we are going to need it in in the header i'm going to import it here right but not, we are not going to use this icon we are going to use so in the finished one we have linkedin github and then twitter so that, those are the ones we are going to use. Now let's search LinkedIn. And we have all these icons that we can use. Let's use the one from Font Awesome. So the FA here means Font, Font Awesome and then the name of the icon, LinkedIn. When you copy, so actually copying just the name, right? So I'm going to paste it here. Control V, FA. It's in the same model. So I, React icon slash. So the, this part specifies the model you are trying to import it from. If I do control plus space, you are going to see all the types of models you can use. You have R, R, R I, S, I, T, B, blah, 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 and so on. So let's just use the F, A, which is font awesome. And we are going to import it here, or we are just going to add it here. So F, A, LinkedIn, like so. Now it should appear on, it should appear on the browser, like so. Yes. So now it's here. <clears throat> It's quite small but it's there if you can see okay now the next icon to add is github and then twitter so let's search for github let's do git and then let's use another one from um you can choose between the options we have here let's choose the one from font also again so let me move back to the VS code and let me import it here since they are all from the same fa model i can just add it here okay so the same thing i come down here i paste it and the next one is twitter okay so we have twitter here and we are going to use the same one from font also and then let me paste it like so okay <clears throat> so now we have our icons when you come to there now we can see we have our icons here so let's let's start it to look a lot better so in this div that we have here let's customize the style so um let's do we have flex and let's space them out space to space x of um, z4 right now this will go ahead and give them some spacing give the icon some spacing as you can see we have some spacing between them okay let me do this so that we see the changes carefully press it here okay now let's change the text color so that it's more visible so text um gray and then we add a shade of 700. And so in, until when you can have different sh shades, right? You can have hand from 50 to 900, right? So the higher the shade, the darker the color could be. So if I use 100, for instance, it will be lighter. As you can see, it is lighter. But I'm going to use 700, right? Okay, cool. Now let's start the actual icons. Okay, so let's start adding our utility classes. 
So the first thing we want to do is increase the size a bit. So we do text XL and then let's add a cursor of pointer. And we are going to add the animation we talked about on hover. So what if we hover on it, you add this hover and then I'm going to say animate. So we have these different animations we can we can add. We have the spin, we have ping, we have pulse. We're going to use bounce, right? So if we hover on it, you can see it's bouncing. And if we hover on it, we want to change the color as well. So we do hover and then we do um text white. Right. So if I hover on it, as you can see, if I hover, it changes color and then it bounce. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the same for the rest of the icons. Let me copy this and just paste them here. Paste it here as well. So if you hover on it, you can see the bounce. Right. Okay. Okay, so let's try to make this nav responsive. So we are going to use these pseudo classes from Tailwind and we have something like this. You do LG and then you put in a class. So I'm going to explain. Tailwind allows us to build websites in a mobile first view, right? So it's the first design is going to be for mobile first and then we start getting breakpoints. We start using breakpoints where we can specify the styling we want to use. So if I do LG and say give it a style like MX, which is margin X of 36, right? Like so. And if I hover on it, I'm going to see the CSS correspondence. So it's um as you can see here, a media query mean width of 1024 pixels. And then this is the style we are giving it. So basically, we are saying that if the screen reaches a breakpoint of 1024 pixels, do this right. So it would give it this margin on the x axis, like so, only on that screen size or from that screen size and above, right? So from 1024 pixels and above, this is going to be um, the, the style we are going to have to give the um, the nav. So if I reduce it, you realize that we don't see it there again. It's the margin is gone, right? Okay. So that's what the utility classes do, or the pseudo classes. The, we have the LG, the SM, the MD breakpoints, and XL breakpoints that we can use. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is um, also the padding we have here okay so everything looks fine okay let's continue now as you can see we have the color they have here is blue but we don't want blue so let's remove this here like so and then let's take this one also out and good let's remove this one as well yeah so now everything looks fine and um let's add also it's very important to note that um, this class here is a reserved keyword in javascript so we would have to change each instance to class name because class means something else in javascript right and it's a good practice to correct such things so let me just select or or let me just first of all start with this so class and then name if you're wondering how i'm selecting all this multiple i'm just if you select one just do control plus d to select the remain the others so this and then control d to select the remaining ones and then like so okay so now we want to give it a case of pointer right because um let me select everything here and then see case pointer like so so when i hover on it see the case of point up there like like that okay so i think this um the icons are too dark let me see what's happening okay i have 800 here let me make it 700 to make it a lot lighter oops okay um let's see 900 
okay a lot better so when we hover on it you can see the changes great so okay um i think let me just keep it 800 and the icons we have text gray 700 let me make it um let's see 600 okay cool <clears throat> so yeah um now let's change the the tabs because we have here home projects testimonials and then get in touch so um projects projects testimonials and then get get in touch like so yes so i think that's pretty much it for the header let me try and increase the text size a bit because it looks quite small um let's do text let's see one ref let's see what we have okay fair enough okay so that's pretty much it for the header we've done our header okay okay so i think we should change um the color here from gray 800 to some hex code um let's do 1b 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 like so okay 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 that's cool that's cool and let's see let's make this 700 okay well, let me just keep it at 600 like so all right <clears throat> so good so now we are done with the header the next thing to do is this um this component we have here so we have a box here think of it as a box right so we have a box here with two sub boxes in it and we flex them so one is here and another is here all in one box right so that's what i'm going to do we can make it a component and then just insert it in our app okay so let me close this and then come in here and we create the component i'm going to name it um let's name it pana new file let's name it pana.js like so use our favorite react snippets rafce then we can remove this import react from here and then inside of our app.js let's import it here um header is it not header banner so let's auto import it for me <clears throat> and then we should see it's somewhere here yeah so it's there it's there okay so let's start creating it so let's start starting it currently and let's add the same lg breakpoint of mx so the margin on the x axis should be 36 like we did in the for the header but the default one should be six so it should start from six then when it hits the lg breakpoint then it increases to 36 so on mobile devices it's going to be a margin x of six but when it reaches the thousand to one thousand and twenty four pixels breakpoint then it changes from six to um thirty six so yes that's the breakpoint we are going to use now let's create another div here like so and this div is going to contain the it's going to contain both the the text here and then the image here right okay so that's what we are doing now so let's style it let's see on a medium breakpoint i'm going to flex it and then i'm going to do items center i'm going to justify between create some space between them i'm going to give it um a padding y of 16 like so okay now let's add an 
um, let's add another div here, which will contain where the text are to contain the actual text. And let me add an H1 here and then put in the name. So Kelvin, so, wow, that's my name. So you can also put your name there. I'm going to paste the style in here so that we move quickly. So let me paste it here. Let me just ex, ex, explain what I've just pasted here. So, um, as you can see, I have text white here. Let me move this to this side so we see what's happening. Text white and then text with a size 2 rem. So that the size of the text is 2 rem. And at a medium breakpoint, you are, you are going to change the text size from 2 rem to 4 rem. So, <clears throat> initially on mobile size, the text will be 2 rem. So, on mobile size, the text will be smaller. But then at the uh, MD breakpoint, which is 768 pixels screen size, we are going to use 4 rem. So, right now, the text size here is 4 rem. And the font width is medium here, yeah, like so. So, font width 500 and then text center. Yeah, and so on. So that's it for this one. And then let me add um, the extra text here. I have it on my clipboard. Let's see. Yeah, let me just paste it here like so. Yes. And um, I'm going to start that one. So I'm going to paste the stars in. And okay, so let me paste it here like so. Okay, so. <clears throat> As you can see the text is now here now i'm saying that the text color should be this hex code right and then on the medium breakpoint the width of this string or this p tag here should be 28 rem and we are giving it a margin top of four and then a text size of lg so it is font size 1.125 rem as simple as that yeah, so the next thing to add from here is um this button here now this button as you can see it has similar features across we have a text here and then this arrow here the only difference is the color all right so we can make this component reusable we can just build it once and use it across our website so let's create a new component called button.js here let's call it button.js now usual rfce and let me clear this and then let's import it in banner here like so let's import it yeah okay so it should be somewhere here yeah so this is it it's there okay <laughs> now let's start building it so Instead of div, it's going to be a button, and um, let me paste this style in here so that we move quickly. So yes, yeah, so this is the button, and I think that the text in the button should be white. And then we are going to add this. Um, we are going to add this chevron icon here. So we want it to flex with the text, right? So <clears throat> I go to make it flex and then item center everything will be centered i'm going to give it a padding on the x axis with 16 on the y axis of 4 and then we're going to round it a bit so rounded sm so the normal one is border radius of this size and we're going to give it a shadow right a drop shadow with this class here and then <clears throat> this this is going to be the shadow color so if you check here you can see there's a slight shadow underneath the button so that's what's going to happen with this then we are going to add a gradient color right so bg gradient to the right bg gradient to right and this is the corresponding css and then <clears throat> when you hover on it it will switch from right to left so when we hover on it's going to be bg gradient to left so that's the to l right and then it moves from this hex color to that hex color so Yes, let me add the text in it. See, let's get started. So let's see what we have here now. Okay, great. Let's get started. Yeah. So this is the style for this button. Now let's add the 
icon let's get the icon from react icons let me open it again react icons and this says for chevron so we need a chevron right um which one can we use um, okay let's use this da seven right so and come here let's import it so um <coughs> import let me paste it in from react icons and then the model is from so it's starting with bs and the name so it's from the bs model so you add a bs to it then let's let's import it here let's paste it here like so great so as you can see the icon is now appearing here so let's give it a margin to space it out a bit so um margin left of four great so now we have this button here and when we hover on it you can see the effects here so you want to make this reusable right so let's add some props and we actually have we can use props to make our components reusable so this text here won't just always be let's get started we'll be changing it dynamically so i'm going to put this prop here called text <laughs> and i'm going to add another one called class name because we'll be giving specific styles to this button as well right so let me bring, instead of saying let's get started let me clear it and then put in the text here so any value i put i give this text prop here it will appear in this button and then <clears throat> since we want this thing to be reusable as i showed earlier in the built one this colors might might change right so i can't leave the default ones here this green color here. i want it to only be this color with just this button so i can add the class this class name prop here inside the styling so that anywhere i use the button i can actually customize the colors or any styling at all i want so if i want to do this i can just use template literals then i input the prop like so so let me clear the code and use template literals instead so back text to do this just use back text it's underneath the escape key on your keyboard yeah, so just use back text like so and then um let me up to where i have rounded sm so these are the custom ones specifically for this button so i'm going to clear it and then uh, i'm going to put in the class name like so class name so where i have the button here now you can see we are going to get some prop options which is the class name and the text those are the props we added and the text we are going to add is let's let's get started so you can see the text is now appearing now we are now using the props now the class name as well let's paste the ones we just removed good so now we have successfully built a custom but that can be reused across the, the app so if you want to change the colors or styling on the text we just customize it with the props we have here great so the next thing we want to do is add this image okay that, that's the next thing we want to do so let's um let's let's do that now so this div here contains the name the and then this button so let's move below it to add another div and this div is going to contain image right so let's let's start it um, let's say flex items center and then justify center okay now let's add another div um so let me paste this style in here so that let me paste it here so what i'm doing here now is um i'm creating this div here and i'm going to give it a background image the background image is going to be the actual image we see in here so 
this is actually a div right with a background image the image is not like inside the div but then it's just the background of the div so the image is the background of the div so that's what i'm coming to do here now and so let me add it here like so um, style and then background let's bring it down to that a lot clearer and then back background image of this URL and I'm going to paste a URL to that image okay so let's see what we have here now all right good so now let <coughs> let me explain the styles we have here so we have this XL breakpoint. So the height of this div will be 25 frame only when we reach the XL breakpoint. Break so by default on mobile screens, the height will be 20 rem, right? The height will be 20. The height of this div here will be 20 rem. But when it hits the, a larger screen, it's going to be 25 rem. And the width is 20 rem by default on mobile screen. But when it hits a larger screen, it's going to be 25 rem as well. And I'm giving it a rounded full to make it rounded as we see it here. And its CSS correspond corresponding CSS is border radius 99 pixels. And I'm saying the background should be cover margin top. And then at the medium breakpoint, we don't want any margin top, so MC will be zero. And I'm using the animate pulse here. So you see for the icons we use animate bounce, but for the image we're using animate pulse. That's how we, we see this pause the pause animation here on the on the image okay great let's see what we must do next so i'm done with this portion and we need to add the, the stacks right we need to add the stacks here so let's 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 do that one so let's quit the div here okay so first of all let me let me show explain something here so as you can see <clears throat> we have these two components in one div and we are also going to put everything here in a, a separate div right so this work with will be in the same div with this one and this stack components here will also be in a different div where we can easily flex them to be in this manner okay so let's continue now let's start it the main div let's let's give it a padding pattern of 16 and then let's flex it and since they are on, on top of each other let's make it flex column so the text and then the stacks are on top of each other the text which is i work with and then and the, the stack component and let's make it height empty center and then on the medium breakpoint i'm going to do items right. so um on the normal view it's going to be item center but then on the medium breakpoint it's going to be item start so it will be on the left side right so let's add text here to be a p tag and we are going to add this text worked with work with and let's make it a white text text um, white so let's check what we have here okay so it's here worked with good so the next thing the next thing to do is create this tag component so this tags here they are all the same basically the only difference is the icon and then the name right the icon and then the name so we can just create one component and make it reusable that's that's basically what we are going to do now so let's create a new file in our component called <coughs> stack js 
and then let's do this now we can import it here like so so since all the stacks are going to be in one div let me create a div so all the stacks like i said earlier all the stacks are going to be in one div so this is the div talking about so um class name I'm going to flex it for it to be in a row form and then flex wrap so if the stacks are many it will automatically wrap itself together so flex wrap and then justify center but on the medium breakpoint you want it to justify start like so okay, now we can now put the component inside of it like so okay so when we come back here we can see stack here somewhere okay so it's there now let's start building the stack component um what do we have here great let me paste this here and if you say okay good so <clears throat> this div here i'm giving it a border and this is the color of the border i'm giving it, this hex code here and then it should be rounded a bit so border radius should be 0 0.375 that's the rounded mv utility class here and i'm going to flex the items within this div so we have the icon and then the name so i'm going to add the icon and then the name so we're going to flex them so that <coughs> they align in a row form and then the items should be centered the width of 12 frame padding y of 4 and then they are going to space out a bit so space x of 2 justify center and then m r m y like so margin right and then margin on the y axis <coughs> so now the next thing is to add an icon so let's go to react icons then the icon you want to add is this react icon here so react icons and i'm looking for a react icon <laughs> So React, search for React. Oh, okay. Now React. Okay. So I'm going to use the one from Font also here. Let's come back here. <coughs> then I come to. So I'm going to import it. So import this from React icon and from the FA model. Let me paste it here. And let me style it straight away. Let me give it um, a text color of uh, the text code 90, 90, 90, and then a size of um, so text. Let me increase the size a bit. Text, Excel. So we also add a name to it, which is the React.js. Then put it there, React.js. Let me style it. So it's also going to take the text of Excel and then a font code. And then let me change the color text. <coughs> the same color 90 90 90 like so great so as you can see we now have the stack component here so if i come back to the banner and i duplicate it create multiple stacks you realize you're getting yeah you're getting something like this it is flex and it, it is automatically wrapping itself so that's the flex wrap in the magic here if I add more, it will automatically wrap itself around. Yes. So if I remove the flex wrap, you realize so it will be scattered on the screen. As you can see, it is now overflowing. But that's not what we want. We want it to wrap. It should automatically detect the screen and just wrap itself. So let me undo it. Yes. So now it's going to wrap. It doesn't matter the number of stacks, you know. You can just put everything here and it will automatically adjust. Okay, so let me 
like this one. Now we want it to be dynamic because we are not going to just be using React throughout, right? We want it to be dynamic. We'll be using different components. So, like we did for the button, I'm going to add props to it. So the first thing I'm going to add is this icon prop. Now it's important to make this icon I'm start with a capital letter because it's going to be a component. So I'm going to the icon we are going to use is going to be a component. And for React components, we know that it's supposed to start with a capital letter, right? So instead of having this FA React here, I'm going to put the icon here. Because we want to reuse it across. So as you can start with it. Now let me bring this one. Let me click take this one out of here and put it, import it inside the banner js file rather and then let me copy this one and where i have the icon prop the icon prop i'm going to paste it in it like this so let me clear this one for now yes so now this thing should be back yes nothing has changed because we have just maintained everything i've cleared i've made this um, icon a prop like so now we want to add and that one for the name. <laughs> so instead of having this React JS here, instead of having this React JS here, let me put in the name. Then let me come back in here. I'm going to assign the name to um React JS. So it should reflect here. Good. Now this means we can do whatever we want with this component. We can add different icons and different text names. It's that, it's that simple, really. So <clears throat> the next thing is this JavaScript icon. So let's go to React icons. And let's search for JavaScript. Let's see what we find. So let's use this one here. And let me duplicate this. Yes, you have to import it from this model, right? And duplicate this and paste this one, paste it here. And it's from the SI model. So let me specify the model. So it should reflect here. <clears throat> and the name should be JavaScript. Like so. Okay, so for some reason. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, it's back. Yes, so we do the same thing for the rest. Let me just paste them in it because it's just the same process. And let's do this. So this F8 is from Font Awesome. So let's just add it here from the same model. And then we have this SI here also from this one. Let's just add it here. So that, yes. So now everything should be back. Good. So we have the React JavaScript Git and then Mongoose, just like we want it. So let's see what we have to do next. Now we have to add this project section as well. So let's let's start with that. So let's add a file called project section. Because that's what in our projects. Okay, and then RSC. Great. So let's import it in our app.js. So we are done with the header, we are done with the banner now. We are on the project section. Project section. So automatically import it at the top for me. And let's enter the file. Great. So let me start styling the div. Yeah. Make the class name of change the background color to gray with the 400 shade. Yeah, it's going to be flex. Flex column. And items center. <clears throat> okay. So the next thing is to add this. Um, this header project and then this text here. So let me, let me just paste it from my clipboard. Let me paste it. Um, 
Okay, so I don't think I've got it here. Okay. Like so. Okay. <clears throat> so now we should see a text here. Like so. And let me explain what we have here. So <clears throat> let me reduce it so that we see the changes. So we have this div here, and this div contains this project's header here. This project's header, which is the H1. This div here contains the H1 projects here, plus the text we have here, this dummy text we have here, which is below here. Yeah, so and in that div, this is the styling we are giving it, right? We are given a text within the div, all the text should be centered. So we can see that all the text within this div is centered, they are in the center. And then it is flex column mode, right? So if you want it to be in a column form, you have to specify the flex and then add the flex col, which is flex direction column, as we see here. And then the items, <coughs> we are doing item center to center everything, make sure everything is centered. And you are giving it a padding bottom of 16 and then a padding top of 12. Right, so this is what we've done here basically. So let's move on to the next thing, which is to build this um, project component. Right, so this thing here is going to be a separate component that we are going to reuse. Right, so they are basi it's basically the same thing. The only thing here is um, the image switches or it flips. Right, so that's that's be the dynamism we have in this component. So we are just going to create a separate component. And just reuse it. It's that simple. So let, let let's do this. Create and let me increase this a bit. <coughs> but first, let me just import it. <coughs> let me import it here. Call it project. I've not created a file yet, so I'm going to get an error. But let me just create it here. New file called pro. Yes, and then FC. Let's import it. And let me import it from here, like so. Import it. Good. Now let's start building it. <coughs> let me paste the style in here. Okay, I think. Let me paste it here, like so. So let me add. So let, let's see what we are trying to do here. So <clears throat> we have this div here with these two components in it. So this one here is a separate div, and this one here is also this image is also a separate div. So we can we are now putting both divs inside one div, then and we are flexing it so that they they stack up at the side of each other, right? So that's how come. We have this flex here on on the bigger on the larger screen. So on LG on the bigger screen, we are flexing it because if it's on a small screen and they are on each other side, it will it wouldn't look nice, right? It wouldn't look nice. So it should only be beside each other on a larger screen, right? So that's why we have LG here to be flexed, and and we are giving a padding on the x axis of six. And on the medium breakpoint, we are having a padding x of 36, and then a margin, a margin bottom of 12, a width of 4, and a space x of 4. Right, so let's add the two divs the one containing the text and then the one containing the image. So let's give it a class name of flex, flex1. Let's add another one here. The same thing so with these two things here are going to be flex of one so this flex one just means that we are giving them equal spaces right we are giving them equal spaces so if this is all the screen speed the screen's width then they should divide it equally we can use width of 50 percent they are all just same things right so flex one is just saying that we are giving it with them both the same or equal width like so okay so we want to add this text here and then this button and then this image. So let's do it now. 
let's make it flex and then it should flex in a column form flex column <laughs> then justify around we want it to justify around and let's give it a height of 80 and then a padding x of 6 like so and we have this h1 text here this text here which is um, web app so that's what we want to add now so h1 and let's see web app like so it can be any name so the name of your project i'm just using web app you can just make it the name of your project you want to add in your portfolio so class name then let's make it text black the black color and then let's increase the size to two rem let me scroll it down so that we see the changes so it should be in a box like this yes and then um let's increase the font width font medium like so good okay so the next thing is to add the dummy text let me place it here like so yes so <clears throat> yeah, this text here the only style i'm giving this is just changing the color right so i'm changing the color text color to this hex code we have here so it's just some the remington text we have here now the next thing to add is the button okay i want to add the button components we created now remember the button has components like the class name the text and then yeah that's all the, the button in the text so let's give it a text of um, view more view more you can see it there now yeah, it's actually there but not that visible but when we add a background color to it that's why we have the class name prop here and let's give it a background color of um to paste in a hex code here <coughs> so let me paste it here like so okay and then um let me paste this one here all right so this is the background color we've given it right given it this orange color instead of view let's say view project yes we have this here Given the class name of this background color, the padding on the x-axis of 10, and then the width is fit. We want it to fit the content, right? And we are giving it a padding on the y-axis of 2. So that's what we have here. So yes, we've successfully added this section, this section of this component. Now let's add the image to it. So for the image, it's going to be within this div we have here right so let me paste it here like so so <clears throat> we have within we are going to do the same thing we did for the um the image we have here so just a, a div with a background image we are doing the same thing here so we have this div here like like this we have this div here <clears throat> with a height of 80 so 20 that's 20 rem 80 so height of 20 rem and then the flex of one and then the background should cover right it should cover and then rounded of lg <clears throat> now to add the background image style and then background image and then insert the url to that image so if the project has a url or you have a, an, a screenshot of some specific section of your web app or website you can just put in the image over there and then the name of your website some text to describe what web app or website you have, you, you have built and then this button to direct visitors to your website okay so we can just come in here in project sections duplicate this a number of times and let's see it yeah so now we have it now now this is all we have but we want it to flip and when we want it to like so for now it's just static we want it to be dynamic we want it to flip okay so what we can do about that is um let's add a prop here called flip okay and within we 
within this div within this div not within this div in fact not not here let me not put it here but let me go into this here in the project let me place here so we have this component flip here and then within this div we want to do something we want to do something here so <coughs> Let me add this back text here and flip the cross. What we want to do here is that if the flip is true, if the flip is true, that's if you want to flip it, you are going to add this class um, flex reverse, row reverse, like this. So it will flex in the row form, but then it will reverse basically. That's what we want it to do. So if we come to project section, and in here i just say flip i'm not saying anything again yeah and i just type flip it should flip exactly so now as you can see it has now flipped it has reversed so flex row reverse right okay so if you want to reuse this component i'm just for for, for for this one i'm just using one image but if you want to use dynamic different images you can just instead of having this hard coded um url here you can simply add another prop called image so that anytime you use that component you can just add the url so let me remove this and then put in the image here the image prop here so in project section i'm going to have the image here and then i'm just going to paste the url same thing here and I'm going to paste the URL and the same thing here. And I'm going to paste the URL. So you can have different images and be pasting the, the images here and it will work. Right. Okay. So for the button, for the button, let see we have one color for all the buttons. All we can do here is create another prop inside project called button so that we change the color. Button. So where we have the button color here to be this i'm going to remove it and then i'm going to use template trials to put it here like so and then let's put the button in there all right so now you can see the color of the button is gone so we are going to bring it back inside the project section and let me add it here a button and let me paste the color the background color here so we should see it here now good and we can do the same thing for here for this one let me copy everything here. i'm just going to change the hex color but let me just paste them here paste this one here also paste the hex color here and let me paste this one also here so we should see them change okay so i think this one is the same let me change it um what do we have here okay this one should change now good so we have we have now we now have different colors for the buttons and we have this components here which just displays our project right so you can just change the image to any image you want maybe an image or some se sections of your project and some short description and the title that's all so the next thing is this testimonial section let's start creating it so let's create a new file a new component called testimonials this let's clear this let me paste this let me paste this tile in here and so if we check if you check here we can see that it has also has this heading with this text just like what we have here so i can just go and copy what we have in there so inside of 
um what's the name project so project section that project section i can just copy this one and then head over to testimonials and then paste it here like this so we should see we should see something like this okay let me come back here so we're not seeing anything now yeah that's because i haven't actually imported the testimonials component so inside of app.js i should import it here so testimonials like so so we should now see it good not exactly how we want it to be but we can fix this so um where, where is it Let, let's enter okay so um i think i've pasted the wrong one here so let me just paste this one here so good so we have this class name here with text center which is actually going to center the text here for us going to center the text here for us and a flex and a flex of columns so that it stacks up on each other item center and then the padding bottom of 16 and then the padding top of 12. good but then the project here is black the project text here is black and instead of having projects we're going to have testimonials we can just change the color here from black to um let's see what we have it in here okay so from black to white <laughs> so from black to white so yes you can now see the testimonials here and that so <clears throat> the next thing is to create this component here so this is just like a card where we just insert the testimonials right so we have this thing here this quotation here and just some text here the image of the person giving the clients giving the testimonials and then the name right okay so let's create that one i'm going to create that component and name it um testimonial card yes and let me import it inside of the testimonial card Like so. So the cards should be in one div because we would want to flex them or wrap them to each other. So I'm going to put everything in a div here. This testimonial card here should be in this div. And let me give it some style here. So it's going to have a padding X of um, let's give it 36. And then we are going to flex it. And we're going to give it a flex wrap. So that it wraps each other. Flex wrap. And items. Center. And then justify. Center. Great. So not much will change for now. Let's go ahead and start styling the ads. Let me paste this style in here. So we are giving it a position of relative because we'll, we'll be adding an absolute image there. So we just make it relative to this div, right? So relative, and we are giving it a specific height of 48 and a width of 80. And on the medium breakpoints, we are, we are going to increase the width. So on smaller screens, the width will be 80. But then when you reach a, a, a much bigger screen, it's going to be 96. That will be the width. We are going to give it a border on the Y axis. So border top and then border, border bottom. And the border is going to take this color and we give it a padding of four. We flex it, make a flex column so that they stack up on each other. Items inside it, they will stack up on each other. We just divide them around and then we give it a, marg a margin bottom of three rem, like, like so. And then a margin right of eight, which is two rem in equivalence. Okay, so that's what we have here. So you can see we have the div here, right? We have the div here and we have you can see the border on top and one on the bottom so the next thing we want to add is this quote here 
Okay, so that's the next thing you are, you are about to add. So let's add the image tag and let's give it a source, be the URL. Let me paste this link here. So this, this is the link to the code. And then um, let me give it this alt text for, to get rid of this warning. Okay. Now let's see what we have here. Okay, let me move to the <laughs> okay. Okay, we are going to fix this. We can fix this. So the image is actually there, but it's big, not how we want it. So we can just style it here. Bring this down. Style it. Let's make it an absolute position. Position absolute. Good. Now I'm going to give it a pop of negative three. So give a negative three here. It's going to be hyphen and then top, and then then hyphen three. So by giving it the top of negative three. So this absolute here is relative to the div. So instead of it being absolute to the whole page, it's only being absolute to the div within which it's it's in, right? That's why we we need to add this relative here. So this image is being absolute relative to this div. Right, so yeah, that's why we have the relative here, and then the absolute will work within that box. Good. So the next thing here is to add this Islamic text. So let's let's do that. Let me paste the text inside, and then let me start it with a text color of. 90, 90, 90. See it here now. Good. Now the next thing is add this image and then the text. All right. So let's do that now. So we can, as you can see, we have this image here and then the text. So they both can be in one div. So the image will be. The image and the text will be within one div and then we've just flexed it so that they stay beside each other so we can do that now put it in one div and let's start this way let's make it flex so that they be beside each other and then items center find them and then space x of two <laughs> I type in this says two. All right. So next thing we want to do is add the image. So we're going to use a span. It's going to be in a span. So I'm just going to do the same thing we did for the um the the, the images, the background image things I've been doing. So let's give it a class name first of all. And let's give it a height of three rem. And then a width of three rem as well, and then rounded full. We give it a BG of cover, okay, because we are going to put in a background image. Okay, so let me paste that one in here. A background image. All right, so we have the image here like so image within the div. Now let's let me add a text which is going to be the name so p and type in the name John Doe. Let's start it now. We're just going to change the color and the text also. Let's see the text is going to be white. I think I'm inside the wrong div. Let me bring it down. Because of course I'm doing it inside the span instead of the div. So we are going to get problems. So this span div here is just for the image, right? But then this div is the one containing both the image and then the text. Good. So we have the text here. John Doe. Change the color to white. Um <coughs> let's increase the size. So text LG. And let's increase the font medium like so great 
So let's see what we have here. Okay. <clears throat> so I think for this one, you can see the text is aligned on the left side. But uh, this one is in the center. Let's see how we can fix that. So let's do start. Let's see what we get. Okay, that didn't work. So let's see how else we can. Okay, so that didn't work because I've put it in the wrong place. So we want to change the actual text here. So let me grab this one from here and then put it here. So this is where we have the text. Let me place it here. So text start. It should, I think, change now. Okay, good. <clears throat> so now we have the components. We have the um, testimonial card here, like so. And we can just duplicate it in the testimonials. We can just create multiple ones and it should work. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Let me add one more. All right, so it's close, too close to this text at the top. So let's let's fix that now. So let's give it um, a margin top of 12. All right. Okay, let me bring it down a lot more. Let's see 16. So this is what we've got now. So the next thing to do now is to add a contact screen. So we are going to add this contact screen here. That's the next thing to do. So let's create um, let's create a component for that. Let's call it contact. Okay, and for that one also, we can notice that the same thing it has the heading here, and then we have the text here. So we can just straight away use what we have here and then just change the text. So let's do that now inside of um, projects. Let's copy this and then. Let's go back to contact. Let me paste it in here, like so. So I have to import it first. I have to import this inside the app.js so that we see the changes. Yeah. Okay, nothing yet. Nothing yet. So let's see what's happening. I have the contact. Um, so let me change add some style into this CBG create two hundred and let's flex it. Change the background and flex it. Flex column and then items center. That's what we have now. All right, so we have it here now. The project and then. This dumb text. So instead of projects, let's say get in touch. Get in touch. Like so. Yeah. So let's see what we have to do next. Let's create this form. Then create this form component here. Let me create a form here. And let me straight ahead style into class name and it will be flexed flex column because all the items are on top of each other flex column and then text should be a bit bigger so text will be oh no i will do that in the input instead so flex column let's see what we have here Flex. Okay, so flex column and let's give it a margin bottom 
for 24 and then it's this y so on the y axis vertically I'm going to space out by four you know, I'm going to give it a pattern of six and then a shadow of LG <clears throat> you should see some changes here with the box okay not much no we don't see much but we'll, we'll fix that so <clears throat> let's add the label 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 iso and then let's start starting it so for the label we are going to flex it i'm going to do flex column and then flex lg and then from medium and then fix black like so okay so the first thing we want to add is email so let's add that so we're going to put in email here then we add this input field so this input of type of um, email and then a placeholder text of please enter email and then let me paste this style in here so this will be the style for the input so it's going to be um okay let me reduce the size so let's see what's happening so it's going to be outline none so we're not we don't want any outline when we click on it so when we click on this we're not going to see any outline and it's going to have a padding x of two and then a padding y of one we are placing the width to 20 rem and then the text should be one rem the font should be normal we don't want um, a bold font and then the background should be transparent by giving it a border of this color as well so that's what we are seeing here great now let's just um let's duplicate it so that we make just make the changes so it's going to be for number and we are going to add another one for the message which is going to be the text area okay so um, of email let's add what's the mobile mobile and then it's going to have a placeholder text please enter mobile then this is going to be a text area you don't have to add this type here and then please enter message going to be the okay what do we have here right so we are getting there we are getting there we have this this email and mobile and then the message section now we need to add this button we need to add this button so we already have a component for that so we can just come down here and import it so button then the props we give it give it the text of submit then change the background color to um pg black and then so we give it mt of six and okay let me just increase this so that it's a lot clearer empty of six and then px padding x of 10 and we give it a width of fit so that it just fits the content and then py of two so let's see what we have here okay okay not bad but it should be in the center it should be in the center so we have to fix that one and um i think it's too wide so so i think we should reduce the py to just one let's see what we have there okay so bad so let's see 1.5 we'll get all 
quite pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, so now we want we want to center this button. We want it to be in the center. So let's quickly do that. So we can do this. We can just um wrap it in a div. Okay, then we start the div. We need to wrap the button in the div. Then let's start it. Let's give it flex items center and then justify center like so. So let's see what we have here. Okay, good. So now it's in the center. Great. So I think that's it. That's it for the build. But we are not done. We are not yet done. But pretty much that's it so um let's now add the effect to it the react the um the fade effect that makes the items fly in like this and let's quickly add it so there's a component we are going to use called um react fail so it's going to help us easily implement this in our in our website so let's go to their docs and we should install it so copy this code here and then just paste it in your terminal or oh, let me just clear the terminal let me paste it here npm install and you can add this false stack otherwise you might face some issues installing it but if you just if you go ahead and do npm install react review and it works for you that's fine but you might have an issues and if you do just add the false stack here so that's that's false and it should work okay so now let's just install so while it's installing let's take docs and see how we can we have different different um styles we can use we have the fade we have the flip we have the rotate zoom bounce roll but we just need the fade so let's see how the fade is done so first of all we have to import it like so so in our app, let's go to the app.js. Let's move. I'm not going to affect it in the header, but just the banner. So, in the banner, let's import it here. Feed. So, I'm importing the feed here. And to make it effect, you just do this feed like so. And then you wrap the component you want to feed in it. So we have this fade here. Then you specify the direction where it should it should start from. So we want it to fade from the bottom. So we just add bottom like so. When you come in here, and then I refresh the page, it should exactly like so. We are going to do the same thing for the rest. So we add the fade here. Also. So from the bottom <clears throat> including the button like so and we do the same let me let me copy this so I don't have to keep typing the same thing then we have this is the image on the side we come in here and let's close it Feed. and for this one it's going to come from the right so let's put it inside like so now for do the same thing with the work with so feed so from bottom everything here put it inside if you are wondering how i'm easily grabbing it to that section just put your um the cursor or your insertion point in the line you want to grab and just do alt and use the arrow keys to direct then you'll be you'll be, you'll be okay so bottom. And so this one is a group of text so i can just highlight it and put it inside 
screen from the bottom. So let's see what we have here now. Let me refresh it. Good. So now they are fading. These ones are fading from the bottom to the top. This one is coming from the right. So let's do the same for the project section. Let's import the fade here, like so. Then do fade. So let me just grab this in here and do the same thing here. Let's grab it in here, like so. And let's specify what to do the same thing for the project. So let me add, okay, I think it's fine. Let me. Add the fade here. So, um, fade. Button. Let's, let's grab this in here. From down here, put this in here, place this one in, then put this in there, like so. So, when we come back here, refresh the page, you see them flying in. Great. Now, the testimonials do the same thing here. Let's import the page, like so. Then do the feed button. Let's grab this and place it in it. Then come down here. Do the same thing. Also button. And for the Cards. I'm going to add a little dynamics to it. So um, this one is going to fade from the left, and then this one from the right. from the right <coughs> so let's refresh the page and see what happens great so we can see the changes all right so the last place is just the get in touch then we end. so in the contact where we have the get in touch let's import the fade Like so, and then put it in here. Go to B from the bottom. Let's add it also from the bottom. Let me grab it and place it here. Let's see what we have. Great. So as you can see, everything is working as we wanted to. We have this navigation here, and then we have these icons here as well. Now let's see if it's responsive. Let's check here. OK, 
Okay, so we're having some issues here, but we'll fix it. Okay, so in regards to that, this text is causing some overflow issues here. But we can fix it now in the testimonials. Okay, so what's causing this? Okay. Okay, so I don't think this is supposed to be here. Let me clear it and see what happens. Okay, fixed. Alright, 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 alright. Let me refresh this thing. <coughs> Okay, so what now? Let's check the responsiveness here actually. Uh, okay, so I don't want this. Okay, let me, let me, let's see what's causing this issue. Okay, so I think this video is getting way too long. I don't think this is it's such a big issue, but it's just something that I might have missed. And I'm sure you guys can figure it out real quick. I don't want this video to be very long. So I'm just quickly going to walk you through how you can deploy it on Vercel. Okay, so first of all, you have to create a Git repository. So <clears throat> let's go to GitHub if you don't have a GitHub account. I suggest you create one. So let's go to github.com and then let me open my profile and then in the repositories I'm going to create a new repository. I'm going to name it portfolio website or let, let's call it personal website like we did with it. Call it personal website YT and let's make it public. Then let's just hit create repository. So it's creating the repository. So now that the repository is created, just let's just copy this link here. So we just copy this URL here and then open your terminal. Let's clear the terminal and run get in it initialize the new git repository and do get add dot to stage all your files to commit clear and then do um get commit then um, you add a message initial commit good and then do get, you add the remote repository we just copied so get remote add origin and you paste the link and then you do get run um, and you call it main you create a new branch and then you do get you do get push origin main so it's going to push all our changes into that repository we just created great so if we refresh the page here to see everything here yeah, nice so under that's done let's go to vessel to so on your browser vessel.com and if you don't have an account on vessel you can just create one create a new account and then you hit new project when you hit new project you can quickly add a repository from your github repository so you should you should choose um, github as a source so that you can see all your repositories here so we have this one here, which is personal website YT, which is the one we just created. I'm going to report it here. And I'm going to leave the name as it is here. And not a lot, we're not going to change a lot here. Let's just hit deploy. So it's going to deploy the app for us right away. So it's going to take a couple of seconds to finish deploying. Yeah, so if you see something like this after the, the build is done, you are going to see something like this. And if you see it, it means you have successfully deployed your app. So you can just click on it and it is going to open in the browser for you. So yeah, 
congratulations you have built your own personal website you have it on a on vessel so that's the domain you have here that's your website name anyone that googles this url will just see your website and see your works you can just come and publish your works here for everyone to see you have this nice fade effect coming in yeah so if you enjoyed this video please like this video and subscribe to this youtube youtube channel if you haven't already and also share the video so that it can reach a lot more people i'll re i'll be very grateful for that and yeah if you have any thoughts on this video you can just leave it in the comment section as well so catch you in the next video